Hello, it's Sarah. And I think I'm going to do this little ATC, a little tutorial on this ATC. It's um, For those of you who don't know, and I get this question all the time when I talk about ATC cards, an ATC is an artist trading card. That's it. It measures three and a half by two and a half, and it can be anything really that you want to do in that little space. And they're meant to be traded with other artists, um, your friends, or whatever. Um, and that's it. It's basically a little work of art in the little size. And I keep mine in a binder in the little sleeves that everybody's using for um, pocket letters right now. Those are basically two and a half by three and a half little they were for baseball cards or collecting cards. So these are the perfect size. Um, and this little ATC was inspired by um, this over, I did this uh, canvas. And I painted that with a friend and we decided to use some stamps. Uh, so I stamped out a lot of those shapes. I painted some of them and I drew some of them. So I just decided to shrink it down I'm gonna put this to the side a little bit here into ATC size and that's what I did. This is the original one I did and I first, um, I used these little punches. Punches are good too, so not as much fussy cutting, which I don't mind fussy cutting. I, I don't mind it, but, um, so I used punches and then I used stamps again. This is, um, some of these are from this lawn fawn. It's called Home Sweet Home, I think. Home sweet home, yep. So I used the leaves, this little branch, um, the bird, which I didn't end up liking him as much, which I mean, I don't hate him, but I liked my little bird, the style of bird that I had done on the canvas, so I just drew him. This one was the first one I made after I drew him, and I covered up my butterfly. There was a butterfly over here, which I totally just, you know, stamped all over him and forgot about him, so he kind of got covered. But this one I made sure... Um, I knew where I was going with that. So uh, if you want to stay tuned and we'll, I'll walk you through the process of how I do a mixed media ATC. Um, I always start out with when I'm doing ATCs, I like to use this. Um, this is a Staples heavy duty file folder and I don't have like I've been cutting it down and cutting it down. But I mean, that's what I use. I just cut this one into a strip. I just cut the whole folder into strips that are three and a half. And then what I ended up doing was for the background, I just use, I have Mod Podge and I'm gonna end up, I think I'm gonna look for um, a soft gel medium. When I'm finished this Mod Podge, I'll use this up first. I think I might replace it with some other type of a matte medium. Um, this says matte, but it still has quite a sheen on it. If you look at this, it's very shiny. Well, I mean, not that that matters, but I think I just want to try it anyway. Um, so all I did was, like I said, I cut this into three and a half inch strips, and then I um, Mod Podge napkins onto the file folder, and that's it. And I kind of like the wrinkles. Some of them had this really cool, like... Um, texture it was like when you peel it apart you know how napkins have that like um a woven almost look to them so i like all that to add texture to the background so don't worry about any wrinkles or bumps or anything like that and the next step is to cover this with uh, a thin coat of gesso now gesso is this and i like the liquitex acrylic gesso and this happens to be a semi, like it's in the middle of between fluid and thick. I like it because it squeezes right out of this bottle. Um, I've had gesso in the, um, in like a uh, tub before and it's just harder to work with. This is just much easier. So I'm going to squirt a little bit of that out. You know what? I'm going to cut the, um, the excess. This has been drying overnight. So this is extremely dry. Yeah, I'm in the shot. Um, and I just, from the back, looking at, uh, I'm stuck, looking at it from the back, just do your best to cut around the edges. And this is kind of crunchy because it's got, uh, Mod Podge is basically a glue. It's like a glue. <clears throat> People make it themselves. There's a lot of YouTube videos with homemade <clears throat> recipes for Mod Podge. 
<clears throat> and I think you just use like Elmer's glue and water basically I mean um, and that way you know because it can be expensive I guess right so people make use of what they have um, but it's a little crunchy oops and I kind of you know I'll cut that part off um, so now I'm going to gesso this and I'm just going to use a uh, these brushes, I love these brushes, and I don't know what the brand, let's see. Yeah, no brand name, but you get these at Michael's in like a set. See, look, I have a bunch of them. And these are just my go-tos for gesso and my, like these are my really grungy brushes that I can use for glue and stuff like that. And they clean up pretty well. They're holding up pretty well. So I'm just, I've squirted a little bit of gesso on my palette and move these out of the way so I don't mess them up. Um... <clears throat> on my palette, my paper plate, and I'm just gonna go into my water a little bit, just a little bit of water. I always use water. I am a, an acrylic painter um, from, for years I painted with acrylics, and it's a water base, so I always add water to my brush. If I'm not using anything oil related, I usually have water in my brush. And because we don't really want this opaque, we just wanna kinda mute down all that color and also give the piece uh, the paper some tooth that's what gesso does because I told you there was a slick that the um, what is it the uh, Mod Podge leaves a slick kind of um, surface this kind of gives you that tooth that you want again to be able to I don't know it's just I think I think rather than having a slick surface it's better so I am going to just let that dry. That's it. I mean, you can still see through it. And I'm going to talk about a couple of other things. One thing was when I was playing with this, I did it a couple of ways. Um, after the gesso was dry, I, let's see, I have these samples. Okay. I put paint. Let's see. That was my original one. Hold on. Here it is. Here it is. I painted over the gesso with uh, acrylic paint. Usually, I was just using like blue, green, and yellow, I think. And this really covered the background. You couldn't see any of the, um, the tissue paper behind it and the napkins and stuff. So after it was done, it was both of these. I did both of these. I was looking at it, and I was like, wow, you can't even see any of the napkin that I did through that, which I loved about this one. You could see a lot of the color from the napkins coming through. I mean, it's hard to tell, but you could. Um, so I don't know. And I also shaded around everything, which on the canvas looks really nice, but I don't think it's necessary on such a small piece, not necessarily, because it kind of dulled all the color down. So this one is really matte looking background. Not a lot of brightness is coming from it. Um, so this one, I took my Wink Estella. It's like a marker. It's, it's some type of, look, this is it. This is the white glitter, but it's like a, it's almost like a water brush. And you, you just release the, the glitter down into this barrel. And then you have glitter on the end of that. Um, I took my clear one and I went all around the background. So you can see that it's like there's a shimmer there. And what that did was it wet the paint again and then I blotted it and then you could see through it a little bit more. I don't know. I don't know if you can see that. And it's also made it shiny because that's what I loved about, well, this one. My original one was so shiny. I love shine, glitter, um, texture, all that stuff. I added... Um, what is this called? This is the dimensional magic in the on the centers of my flowers. Like I love all that. So I was missing that on these and thought, oh, that's why I did the Wink Estella. And I, I don't mind how that one turned out. And this one is completely a, a dull background. So then I decided on these um, to really go much lighter with the paint. I didn't want to cover up all that um, nice design that was showing through the gesso. So all the butterflies and like the stuff that pops through that bright color, you know, of these flowers, this one's kind of doesn't have a lot of brightness, but like there's, um, music right there, song music, or, you know what I'm saying? Um, so anyway, and like this texture, all, 
Um, so anyway, it's just personal preference. And after you've done a few, then I did these. And I really loved how this, this came out. This is at, after I've added some stamping, a little bit of, I didn't do any stenciling, just stamping. And, and these little, um, the white circles, I used the end of a pen, a pen cap to kind of do that. And that's it. That's, that's all the um, mixed media I'm doing as far as that goes. I mean, you can do on a bigger piece, you can even do it on a smaller piece, stenciling and um, what's it called? Texture paste, all types of things. But for, because everything on here is so little, I didn't want to put too much. I wanted these to be my focal images. So um, in that case, I'm going to go ahead and show you the next step, which I don't have. Let's see. I made so many of these, but I don't happen to have one ready to go. So I'm going to go away and come back um, with that dried and we'll do the next step. Okay, I'm back. This is dry. I'm going to do now. I wanted to talk about paint a little bit. I have paint up the wazoo. Well, <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but that there's like a spinny thing there filled with paint. I have uh, buckets of paint. I have on the in the basement. I have a thing on the back of my door that has paint filled in it. So I, because I said I was an acrylic painter for years, so I have lots of paint. One of the new paints that I've discovered though is the Martha Stewart paint. Um, and she sells, and so does Deco Art and Americana. They do have their um, metallics and all that stuff. Um, I've got, I got a few of these on clearance at Joann's, and that kind of just started my collection. They have a pearl um, finish on some of them, so I have several pearls. This one's a pearl. Um, and then they have a satin. So instead, and I think they do have metallics, but what I was going with was just okay that's the only one so i think i thought i had a purple all right um anywho so that's what i've been using and that gives that nice uh glistening you know it has a pearlescent effect to it so i'm just liking that now if you don't mind listen use what you have is always my suggestion don't run out and get things and um <clears throat> use what you have and you can always add glitter to it after, which I'm definitely going to do too. So before we cut this into our ATC size, I am just going to add some color. And I'm going to add some blue. Let's see. I got to add pink. I'm going to use the satins right now. I think I'm going to use this pink satin. I'm going to use this blue. And I don't have a green satin. Oops, that was way too much paint, by the way. You don't need a ton. I'm going to use the same brush that I, you know what, I'm not. I'm just going to go with <clears throat> the next size down that I have. Add water to my brush. I want this to be like a wash. And by a wash, I mean <clears throat> you're just kind of like when you coat something with water. That's basically, it's just going to have a tint of color in it. The, wa the, um, the water. So it's mainly water with paint. That's why I do not need that much paint. <laughs> I really don't need that much. I'm making like a little puddle here of water paint. And that's what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to kind of almost dry brush it. Not really. It's obviously not a dry brush, but that's a technique too. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, <clears throat> just put some color down on here. Don't Because I'm using the blue because it's a sky mostly. Most of the, the ATC, it's like a sky. And then there's going to be some sun, so we could add, I just like the pink because it's like, pink is like the reflective color. I don't know. I'm not an artist. I'm a crafter. I never took an art theory class. Of all the classes I took, that was never one of them. Um, and pink and blue make purple. So that's also another awesome thing that happens with these two colors because I love my pastels. I love pinks and purples. So that's looking pretty. See, I like this. I haven't even, you know, just the color that's coming on there, I like. Um, it makes me happy. And I am just adding a little more because then when I cut this into ATC size, we're going to add our sky and our grass for real. So I'm going to add green onto here. Um, 
and blue and a little bit of yellow. You know what? Maybe I'm going to throw a little bit of yellow right now. Um, yellow and blue make what? Green. Yellow and pink make probably orange. So those are all good things. That's the only thing I try to do when I'm using a bunch of colors is not make mud. And so as long as these colors are going to make another color that's not a gross color, <laughs> I'm happy. And that's it. Now I think sometimes, I don't know, I've seen lots of videos where people take a baby wipe and they just use it to move the paint around. So I've been doing that. And acrylics do dry kind of fast, so you have to kind of do it quickly if you're going to do it. But that's it. That's all I want to do. I think that actually came out a little yellower than I was hoping. But I'm going to go, I'm going to take a little bit more blue. I have so much blue out on my palette. It's a shame. I'll stick it back in the bottle. I do that all the time. And I'm just going to put a little more blue. And it's actually, if it turns green, that's okay because there's sky and trees. and So that's good. But look at the pastel -y color. I like it. That's my fave. All right. I got to dry this again, guys. And then we're going to come back and do some stamping. All right. Be right back. Okay. So this is dry. Um, and I stuck my finger in it and pulled off some of the gesso. You're going to have accidents like that. I think when I cut this, though, that might actually get cut off. Two and a half, two and a half. Um, but see how you can still see the background through? I like that because what's the point of putting that underneath if you don't see it? That's my opinion. Um, all right, so the next step, I like to do, like I said, I love shiny, glittery stuff. I have this gold metallic paint. This is by DecoArt. It's their Dazzling Metallics. And I'm going to actually stencil that <clears throat> onto the background. So I'm just going to use a sponge. Like I actually cut up a regular sponge from the Dollar Tree. Like this was a real sponge. And I'm going to wet it. I'm just sticking it into it. I have this ugly old water bucket thing. I've had it forever. And it's not clean water. That doesn't really matter. I just don't want it to be stiff. And I'm going to use like, let's see, I have a couple different stencils. I just like this basic square. It's like a small checker pattern, but you could put whatever. But the way I do it, it's not really showing the shape as much as it's just putting some metallic -y paint on the surface. So it's not about the shape really. I mean, because I have hearts, stars, circles, um, but I just like this square. So I'm going to go with this. Um, I'm going to use this side. I don't know why. There's really no r rhyme or reason to this. Um, and just kind of pounce on top of this stencil. And it's, it's like I said, I think it's a little too wet to show the actual shapes. But see, some of them, let's see if you can even see that. See, I really covered that whole section a lot, um, which I like to skip around a little bit. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And look, there's really no rhyme or reason. It's just... I have kind of figured out a process that I like because I work better that way. I think I just like to know where I'm going instead of just having to think. I don't like to think. Yeah, that's a good, uh, when I'm doing art anyway, I don't want to think. I just want to relax and play. Like I really consider this playing. It's the way I play. So. I don't want to think and struggle. So that's how I get my shine on there. So that has to dry because actually that's paint too. But the next thing we're going to do is um, stamping. And I use, um, for this I've just been using my archival, which is an acid-free permanent and waterproof ink. Um, you could use stays on uh, because I am going to be putting the matte medium on top and it will it'll pull and ru make things run if you don't use a permanent ink you're gonna have black smudges all over the place and that won't make you happy so um, I just happen to have some nice waterproof ink and that's what I use I'm just cleaning my stencil you can tell I don't really clean it clean it I also have this is stays on so I use this red blazing red I like to use that for my hearts so I have I've pulled a couple different these are actually recollection stamps and they were around four dollars 
and you get a bunch like you got a background stamp and a bunch of littler ones I think this was like a Valentine's one and this one came with a B I forget what they came with but I like these for I like the the script and the hearts I loved um, what else do I use? I like this one. This one, I think it's a Dina Wakely stamp, but it has like little numbers in there. I really like that. And then this one's just, um, I don't know, a little like kind of a flowery circle print. So that's it. Those are like my go-to shapes. I have other ones in here, but I can't find them at the moment. I have a, um, what is this called? Harlequin. I have a Harlequin and actually like a check. I think this is a Tim Holtz one that I like to use too. But this is just for a background and like let's look at my um, sample here. I love how you can see that little, this one. So you don't see, oh yeah, you can see some numbers here. They're just subtle. They're not really to the forefront. There's some script writing. The hearts have been kind of, there's the hearts, but see how they're red? Um, see if this one, this had some bigger, um, flowers, their script. So yeah, it's just subtle in the background. All right. And that's the whole point because you don't want the background to, to take over the project. You really just want it to be, um, in the background. That's why it's a background. All right. So I'm going to dry this and I'll be right back. Okay. This is all dry. I just see, I love, that makes me happy. Just those pastel colors and the gold glitter. All right, so I have this red stays on and so I'm gonna put some hearts. And because the, uh, the ATC is uh, vertical, you know, it's not landscape, right? Is that what I wanna say? I don't know. I just put a little red and I'm gonna hit it here and there because I'm gonna end up cutting these apart that's enough. That's all I need. Just a little bit of hearts. Uh, I'm going to switch to my black ink and do some of this script. Um, I guess I hid my black ink. I'm not going to make it through the night. I can't find it. So I'm just going to take this and put a little script on here. I really like the script in the background. It's super cool. And here and there. That's kind of a lot, but whatever. It's all good. Oh, I still need that. I'm going to put, oh, I like these, the little circles. And I've been using this end. I don't know why. It has three different color or size circles, so that's why I like it. And put them on. And I'm pushing kind of hard because I want them to show up. And like it. Okay. That and that, I think that might be it. I'm not going to add the, um, so what did I do? I did the hearts. Yeah, I think that's it. You know what I'm going to do though? The white. I like to use white paint. You could probably use gesso too, but I just happen to have white. This is white acrylic paint. And I take the, um, let's see, like a pen. One of my, uh, I like to use these, the uh, Faber-Castell. I just like that, I don't know, I think that's a pretty decent size circle for a little thing anyway, because I've used any kind of cap you can use. And I get it a little bit wet. I'm just adding a drip of water and my finger and mixing a little wet puddle of paint. Um, and I'm just going to put some white circles on here. So... That is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take my pen cap and go boop. Can you see that? Oh, I don't like that shine. On the, that's my lights. I have a very bright light in my craft room. I like to just kind of, I like a lot of these. I like to add the white um, Sorry, I don't talk when I um, make circles, evidently. So, it's a hot day here in New Jersey. I would say it's in the 90s. I think we're going for another heat wave. And um, I was in the pool 
this morning or earlier in the day, I came in, took a shower and said, I am staying inside. It is too stinking hot. I don't like it. So that's it. Let's have a look. All right. That is basically my background. The next thing I'm going to do is cut these down to size. They will turn out something like this. And the next thing I've done is taken that blue paint and some green paint and given them a top and a bottom. So you can definitely tell that this, you know, this doesn't really have a direction. It's kind of just, you know, um, so I'm going to use this one. This is, I don't even know if you'll be able to see it. Um, but the technique I used is from my acrylic painting days and it's called a float and I like to use a uh, an angle brush it's my go-to I get water always always use water in the bristles and I mix let me just put some of this stuff away um, those of you who watch my videos and have watched my painting videos you know you know what a float is I'm gonna take some of this blue on the corner and I'm gonna just run it through the bristles there's water and paint on my brush so basically a float then is to go across the surface with the darkest color at the top and then it fades out and that's it's a this is a dark this one was a, a painted surface, so I'm going to grab the green and just do that again. Try to see if you could see it. You definitely would be able to see this really good on the, the piece, this one, that we just did because it was so light. But it's still a little wet, so I don't want to go away and come back just yet. We're only four minutes, so I'm going to take some of the green again on the corner of my brush. And I'm blending it into the bristles this way. And then I'm just going to do it again, take this and put the darker color to the edge. And this way it, it gives a gradation of color, like it's dark to light to water. And so now you can kind of tell your bottom and your top, right? So now that being said, I am going to use these that I had previously done and start with the next step, which is to add our little, um, the paper main focal points. And I did those, like I said, with cop uh, page paper. I took some page paper and I stamped me some shapes that I liked. Sorry, my desk is kind of crowded. Where did I put, oh, here it is, the stamping block. I just permanent ink, stamped a bunch of stuff all over here and cut it all out. I also drew myself a couple of um, birdies because I told you I liked the little birds from my, um, so that's the little bird. I'll show you how, how to do them. He's easy, he's super easy and sweet. I think he's super sweet too. And I'm using, to, for those I used a number one, which is this graphic number one Pigma pen. Um, it's a Pigma Micron by, what is it, Sakura, number one. It's like the thickest line. And for that little bird, I'm gonna make them a little big, just so you can see, but you st I start with the tail, and then come around like that. And then you, I put his little beak, I have a closed eye, and then his wing. That is it. That's the basic shape. So you just try and do it really little. And if you, um, you don't, I don't like that one. So you just keep going till you like it, you know? All right. And then I cut out a few of those. So I have quite a few. I also, like I said, there happened to be a branch in that, uh, stamp set. So this one, I just painted my branch. But this one, I put a stamped branch on there, and I like them both. But for this one, I am going to use this painted branch. I ended up um, drawing some leaves, so let me bring this back a second. 
for the leaves, obviously, it's just like a little, that's how I do it, but just tinier. So you're just going to do tiny ones and only cut out the ones that you like. I did have a few leaves that I stamped, like these leaves. This one is for the bottom of the rose, so that's the, f the flower petals. And then these are kind of more tree leaf ones. But I don't put all of them up at the tree because I do paint some. So for this, I'm going to use this gel medium. And it is by Golden, if I can find it. Here it is. Um, I was had some other type of uh, matte medium. And I like this, the soft gel. Um, I like it, uh, well, it's transparent. Um, but I like it thin and I think there's even a thinner because it's still pasty. It's like glue It's kind of like the consistency of glue, but I like it thinner. It's when it's too gloppy I don't like it. So the next one I buy I might even try the thinner one and Just see see how it goes and I always use a coupon I'm gonna use this little brush now the smallest of my little oh there it is craft smart I'm pretty sure that's either the AC Moore brand or Michael's brand. Craft Smart. Is that a um, paper line too? I don't know. And I add water to my brush. It's out of habit. But I am going to blot. And I'm going to pick up some of this multi matte medium. You know what else is a good thing to do too? You can just lay out your design so that you don't have to think. See, again, it's all about thinking for me. I don't want to have to do that. Um, oh. I have, oh, here they are. I've punched out a bunch of stuff already. So I have a little sun, too, that I just used my littlest circle punch. I don't know what size it is. Maybe like a half inch. I don't really know. Um, and again, book pages. So I just take it and put it where I think it's going to go. You can always change it. Um, I like this guy to be tall. This guy is kind of like the middle side. Oh, you know what? If we're doing the rose, though, because I did like the rose. I like the rose. You could do them all this kind. You Use what you have. The butterfly was kind of in the middle. 